What's going on everybody? How's it going? Welcome back into another video. My name is Yusuf and first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Yes, thank you <laughs> for clicking on this video today. Seriously though, it means a lot to be able to just sit down in front of a camera and have a discussion basically with myself in an empty room and have people genuinely enjoy what I have to say. Thank you to everyone who leaves feedback. Uh, who leaves a comment, who leaves a like, who watches, who subscribes. Shout out my boy Booby, man. My boy Booby's been a subscriber from day one. Recently, I've been getting a lot of questions um, in person and online as to how it is that I've been learning French. Those of you guys who don't know, I've been teaching myself French for about seven months now. This was a video of me from when I first started. Hello, mes amis. Uh, je m'appelle Youssef. J'ai 21 ans. Uh, je suis étudiant dans l'école de commerce. Uh, J'aime le football, le basket, uh, la volleyball. Uh, J'ai deux frères et deux sœurs. That's rough, buddy. Bonjour, uh, ça va? Non, je, <rire> je plaisante, c'est pas mon français maintenant. Uh, après 7 ou 8 mois, uh, j'espère que mon français ça, ça a amélioré. Et uh, évidemment, je pense que uh, ça s'est passé. Uh... <rire> je suis une bête, désolé. Mais oui, uh, c'est mon français. Uh, le français pour moi maintenant, c'est facile pour moi de parler um, et de comprendre aussi. Uh... Mais évidemment, il y a toujours des situations qui sont difficiles pour moi de parler ou d'exprimer moi-même parce que je n'ai pas le correct ou le, le bien vocabulaire euh, dans cette situation, dans ces situations. Euh, mais je pense qu'avec le temps, avec le temps, ça sera amélioré. Ouais, ça sera amélioré beaucoup, beaucoup maintenant aussi. Um, anyway. Recently, I was having a conversation with some of my homies. I was speaking French to one of them, and uh, he speaks French as well because he ta was taught French in school for a couple of years growing up. I was self-taught, and my level of French was much higher than what he thought it was. A lot of people actually have a similar sort of reaction, especially um, like native speakers, when they hear the way that I speak to nation, the way that I pronounce words. I don't say bonjour, I say bonjour, right? I don't sound like a, I don't sound like a complete gringo, but in, in French, right? A gringo, that's probably what they say. And people wonder how it is that I've been able to do that. The way that I taught myself was basically by learning what people spoke most commonly, I adapted to those words very quickly, right? I learned those words very quickly. And then I started to input the language every single day. Those of you guys who don't know, um, language learning has two steps to it, two phases to it rather. You've got the input phase. I don't know why I stuck up the middle finger there. You got the input phase and then you got the output phase. Input is basically imagining this entire room to be French. Imagine this entire room is French and all the air in this room is French, this is the French language. Take all of this air, I need to take all this French in the room and I need to insert it into my brain, right? I need to input it into my brain. There's a lot of different ways that you can input a language. One of the most common ways to input a language is by listening to a language. Another good way to input a language is to watch a TV show. Another good way to input a language is to listen to the music. Another good way to input a language is to read. There's so many different methods that you can use to input a language within to your brain, within to your brain. And this is the most important and most critical step, especially when you're starting out, because you need to establish some sort of foundation for yourself so that you could start to comprehend. You can't speak, you can't have a conversation with somebody if you don't comprehend. The output phase consists of speaking the language, of writing the language, right? When you have a steady and, and firm grasp of both of these stages, and then you're able to start to actually converse a little bit and start to speak a little bit. What I'm going to show you guys today is one of the methods that I use to really help input the language of French and output the language of French. Before I explain this concept to you, right, I wanna just share some general information with you that will help you understand this concept just a little bit more and why it's effective for me. Two different types of learners, okay? The first learner is more of an audio learner, right? Someone who learns by hearing something. I myself rarely take notes, like I learn more by hearing. And then there's the visual type of learner, right? The visual type of learner, one, is one that works better with visuals, one that looks what works better with pictures, with words. Um, like they need to see something in order to grasp it more. This method right here 
uh, works very well for myself because I prefer to learn through audio. And the method that I'm talking to you guys about is basically like an analyzation or an active reading of a podcast. This method is really effective for me because number one, it helps me expand my comprehension. Number two, it helps me expand my reading ability. Number three, it helps me expand my pronunciation. Number four, it helps me expand my vocabulary. And with all of these things that it's expanding, overall helps me to expand my understanding of the French language. This method in particular is pretty simple. What you basically need is a pen, uh, you need a notebook, and uh, you need to find a podcast. Right, Yusuf, you've been talking for a minute, bro. When are we gonna see this process? Okay, we're gonna start right now. Bonjour et bienvenue à mon ordinateur. Maintenant, je vais te parler avec un mix du français et l'anglais parce que c'est une vidéo à propos du français. <rire> je vais te montrer la façon ou la méthode que j'utilise pour apprendre le français. Uh, la méthode est très simple et très effective pour apprendre le français ou en autre langue si tu veux. Uh, ça m'aide beaucoup avec ma prononciation, ma capacité de parler, uh, de lire et surtout ma compréhension. Uh, alors, on y va, on va commencer. Première chose, c'est on doit trouver un podcast pour notre niveau um, et la transcription pour ce podcast. Je te recommande uh, d'utiliser le podcast sur la description ou de trouver un podcast uh, par toi-même. Aussi, je te recommande d'utiliser une carte uh, et un stylo ou um, un crayon uh, pour écrire le mot que tu ne comprends pas. Parce qu'il y a beaucoup de ces mots. Uh, si tu ne peux pas comprendre, uh, surtout au début. Pour moi, j'utilise le podcast, uh, ça s'appelle le Coton Podcast. Je trouve ce podcast de, de deux mois et ça m'aide beaucoup. Uh, le podcast en général, uh, c'est très intéressant. Um, et il parle à propos de choses que je, je suis tellement intéressé en. Talks about the things that I'm very interested in um, en français. Donc, uh, ça m'aide avec ma français et aussi je prendre une nouvelle chose aussi. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to start using the method. So, once you have your Google Docs link or once you have your um, pen and paper and you have a podcast and you have the transcription, what we're going to do is we're going to start using the method to learn. In a nutshell, what we do is we read the podcast before we hear it and then we hear it while kind of mouthing the words to the podcast with the, the podcaster and then we say we we read the podcast again out loud on va commencer here we go transcription de l'épisode salut à toutes et à tous je suis ravi de vous retrouver pour ce nouvel épisode et je suis encore une fois en compagnie de Ingrid aujourd'hui salut Ingrid il me semble que tu es un peu malade oui, un petit peu. Uh, là, c'est début octobre, donc en France, il y a le room. Le room, I have no idea what that word means, so I keep a mental note of this. Uh, les, angi, les angines, et j'ai, et j'ai, et pas manqué. Donc, voilà, désolé si ma voix est un peu chancelante. En tout cas, j'essayerai to faire au mieux. Okay, so right here, there was actually a couple of words that I didn't really know. So what I want to do is I want to take these words and I want to copy and paste them into this little French vocabulary sheet right here. So, il y a le room. So this podcast right here is really good because it tells us some of the words that we might not know. So room means cold, right? Like a sickness, right? Les angines. Les angines. I don't have any idea what this word means. So I copy and I put it into here. Okay. I go into Google Translate. Angine. Tonsillitis. Okay. So I had no idea that this word meant tonsillitis. So I take it. And then I put it here. This is going to kind of trigger me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Okay. That's better. All right. And then. Et j'ai, j'ai pas manqué. What does this mean? I did not slip through it. Okay, so it means that she got sick. Um, donc voilà, désolé si ma voix est un peu chancelante. Don't know what this word means. So I take it, copy and paste. And I go into here. Tottering. Okay, so her voice is like choppy. And then we'll be able to hear this actually because the, this is a podcast. So we will be able to tell 
um, that her voice is is indeed tottering. Okay. So we just read a paragraph. Um, we read up until right here. So this is a good time for us to stop and then listen to the podcast and hear how it should actually be said. And now we're going to listen to the podcast. So here we go. Episode 102, Faire sa vie à l'étranger. Salut à tous et à tous, je suis ravi de vous retrouver pour ce nouvel épisode et je suis encore une fois en compagnie d'Ingrid aujourd'hui. Salut Ingrid, il me semble que tu es un peu malade. <rire> oui, un petit peu. Là, c'est euh, début octobre, donc en France, il euh, y a les rhumes, les angines et euh, j'y ai pas manqué. Donc euh, voilà, désolée si ma voix est un peu chancelante. Euh, en tout cas, j'essayerai de faire au mieux. That was pretty quick. Um, honestly, a little fast for me. So it's okay if you need to listen to this one more time just to get a good understanding, okay? You're going to tweak this method around to work for your level and for your current um, abilities. So this right here, like one time listening to this would have been enough for me to help improve my pronunciation. But just to kind of hammer home the point that this is different for everybody, I'm going to listen to this again. So here we go. Salut à toutes et à tous, je suis ravi de vous retrouver pour ce nouvel épisode et je suis encore une fois en compagnie d'Ingrid aujourd'hui. Salut Ingrid, il me semble que tu es un peu malade. <rire> oui, un petit peu. Là, c'est euh, début octobre, donc en France, il euh, y a les rhumes, les angines et euh, j'y ai pas manqué. Donc euh, voilà, désolée si ma voix est un peu chancelante. Euh, en tout cas, j'essayerai de faire au mieux. So now that we have done the first step where we've read the podcast in our initial voice, right, in our own voice and what we think it's right, and then we've listened to the podcast as many times as we've, as we've needed to hear how it should sound, what we want to do in the third step is we want to try and mimic, um, not mimic or like make fun of, but rather we want to try and get our voices to sound as close as possible to the native speaker, right? What you'll notice is that they have these little speech tendencies, right? that really helped to differentiate a native speaker from just a person learning the language. First time around that I read this, I said un petit peu. When Ingrid said it, she said un petit peu, un petit peu. So like, it's almost like this T didn't even exist. And she just went like, she did like a TP sound right here and then went straight into the E. Uh. So like these little tendencies will really help to differentiate a native speaker from somebody who is just, you know, like a foreigner that can't speak the language. And in my mind, I want to get as close as possible to a, uh, to a native speaker. Listening and, and repeating what they say really helps get you there over time. So for the third step, we're going to, we're going to read this again. And we're going to try and sound as close as possible to the podcast. Transcription de l'épisode. Salut à toutes et à tous. Je suis ravi de vous retrouver pour ce nouvel épisode. Et je suis encore une fois en campagne de Ingrid aujourd'hui. Salut Ingrid. Il me semble que tu es un peu malade. Oui, un petit peu. Là, c'est début octobre, donc en France, il y a le rhume, les angines et j'ai à pas manqué. Donc voilà, désolé si ma voix est un peu chancelante. En tout cas, j'essayerai de faire au mieux. So, I don't know if you guys could notice, but the first time around that I was saying it, it was not as smooth as the second time around. Um, and that's and that's what this whole method is all about. It's all about increasing your ability to pronounce words that are hard um, and to increase your comprehension so that you understand the general meaning of conversations and to overall help you get closer and closer to sounding more like a native. That's going to be the method for today. I have some other methods that I would love to show you guys, but I will catch you guys back in my room. Welcome back for the closing thoughts in my room. You guys are probably wondering, how is this method helpful? I'll tell you why this method is helpful. It took me from saying bonjour to saying bonjour, right? These little things, these little subtleties that you, um, that you say, these little subtleties in the way that you speak really, really make the difference. And it's important, right? You're dealing with somebody's culture, with their way of life, with the way that they speak, the way that they interact. So it's important to really try and put as much care, effort, and respect into trying to sound as close as possible to them. Obviously, you're gonna have an accent, right? Because you are not a native speaker. However, the more that you can lessen this accent, the less barrier to entry, I believe, and the easier it is to become friends with somebody that you've never even met before. That's gonna be it for today's video. If you guys are interested in seeing any other ways, any other methods that I use to learn French, 
please let me know if this is your first time watching a video on this channel and you've made it this far thank you for watching be sure to like comment subscribe and share if you're a real one share if you're a real one come on man that's a simple thing um <laughs> so yeah man that's all we got for the video today i hope you guys have a wonderful weekend wonderful week wonderful day wonderful year everything man let's get it man let's make some progress let's make this year the best year that we've got i'll see you guys soon peace out